Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. Today, I want to talk about the power of seeing others in your industry as collaborators instead of competitors. And being able to identify opportunities for collaboration that are super clear and super simple and yet not instinctive. It's so strange, isn't it? That there are so many of these opportunities in front of us that we don't grasp because we don't go right to the opportunity to collaborate. And I'm going to share a couple of examples with you, but we really tend to underappreciate the power of combining forces in our industries. We see each other as competition. We see comparison. But I'll challenge you, the next time you see somebody in your industry doing something where they're successful or doing something for the same type of ideal client that you serve, think, how could we work together? What unique skill sets, what unique superpowers can I bring to the table? You know, how can we form the Hulk, Thor, and Captain America, and Iron Man? Uniquely, all of them, superheroes. Uniquely, all of them, powerful. But together, unstoppable. And that's what I want you to feel when it comes to folks that you work with. It's how I feel about my team. I feel like we have such a great team that we've cultivated, the best of the best that I've been able to curate for each client. And there's a reason for that, which is looking for people with common values, looking for people with common interests in serving, common missions. And I'm going to give you an example of one that happened recently. And it's just this week, actually, just yesterday. And This is a really cool example of an idea that I had where it just makes total effing sense. And I'm going to share my example, but I want you to find your own examples and find a way to get creative with how you can apply this. So I was thinking, you know, here's the issue with, with my service. Fractional CFO services are something that are seen as more elite, we'll say, limited access, something that people at a certain level can purchase, but maybe at a certain level cannot. And it's really hard to understand what having a fractional CFO tastes like if you've never tasted it before, if you've never had an appetite for it. So I was thinking, how can I create an appetite for fractional CFO services? Also combined with this, I'm realizing that the more I'm speaking to business coaching communities, the more I'm, and and by by all means, I enjoy it a ton. I love teaching. But I feel like the content can go in one ear and out the other. I mean, hell, you've probably skipped a few episodes of the show. Don't lie to me. I know you have. And (laughs) you've been thinking, well, it doesn't really apply to me. Or I don't have to worry about this stuff yet. And I get that. But it is advice for you. And I want people to listen to it. And there's a reason why I'm showing up in these rooms delivering this advice to early stage business owners. I want them to pay attention to the building blocks they need to put in place early in their business so they're not stuck with a higher stakes problem later down the road. And why I'm unpacking all of this is I I just kind of sat in that problem and got really clear about that problem. And I said, okay, listen, Shannon, you need to help business owners who are in that kind of growth stage. Where are they? And better yet, not just where, where is your ideal client? I want you to go that step further and go, who's already serving them? Where are they already at? Where have they already gathered? And I'm not talking about social media because every business coach on the planet will tell you, where is your ideal client hanging out? And they're referring to a social platform. I'm referring to the literal rooms they are sitting in. Where are they gathering? And in this case, I said, you know what? I need to find a mastermind. I need to find mastermind communities that are already cultivated, full of business owners who are action takers. Because naturally, if you're in a mastermind group, they are action takers. They are willing to invest in their business growth. So they're growth-minded. They are also willing to learn. They're open-minded. These are my people. These are absolutely my freaking people. So I have crafted this offer 
Now, I've had this for a while, but I, I haven't actively marketed it yet, so stay tuned. But I'm offering this, this service to different mastermind groups where I will come in, and I've done this before, where I will come in as a resident CFO. I'll come in as the resident CFO, and I will serve your business community by having a series of meetings with your participants. I will go through, I will analyze their financials. I will, you know, give them some advice on what to do, maybe look at some tax planning for them and give them a taste of what it's like to have that person on their team for the duration of the program. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Shan, this is cool, but like, wouldn't it be easier if you just offered this? If your goal of keeping your books updated lasted just about as long as your New Year's resolution this year, it's not too late to change the narrative for your business. Getting the books caught up can feel daunting and overwhelming, but not if you have a trusted and encouraging partner like Andrea at Liquid Sense Bookkeeping by your side to help you untangle your numbers and understand the story they're trying to tell you. Check out the link in the show notes to learn more about Andrea and her team and how they can help you close out the year on track. No, because... Now I have to market it. I have to sell it. I have to craft up the email campaigns. I have to dedicate Sid, my CMO's time to making that happen. And I have to then confuse my audience even more, confuse you guys who are getting my emails. Like, what the hell is she doing now? So I said, you know what? I'm just going to utilize my network. I'm going to ask around and I'm going to say, is anyone hosting a business community that would benefit from this? And this goes back to my networking conversation. This goes back to being willing to ask for what you need, right? Because nearly immediately after I put this out there, I met the most amazing group of mastermind leaders, several of them actually, several different groups that are all craving this type of service. So where I'm going with this is think about how your offer can serve as a really killer side dish to somebody else's offer or be plugged into somebody else's program. You know, don't be afraid to be the coleslaw. You don't got to always be the chicken right? Be the coleslaw, be the side. It's okay. Because if you're trying to sell your service by itself, it might be more challenging. It might be more of an uphill battle. But if you can get people to test drive it, if you can get it installed in someone else's offer, and even better yet, if someone else can sell it for you, if someone else can make it part of their program and offering, and all you got to do is show up and deliver, this is kind of the dream for the person who is the technician who started a business. This is the dream for someone who really wants to do the work and deliver the results and offer and fulfill on that order, but maybe doesn't want to spend all their time selling and marketing and starting from scratch. I get it. It's not always easy to cultivate relationships from scratch with these clients, but if someone can kind of give you the key to their accelerated network, why not take it? So I'm going to ask you, where in your business can you plug your service into an existing area where you could just kind of insert yourself? become the resident expert or supplement what they do where you're going to add value to everybody and really fulfill on the idea that a rising tide lifts all ships. How can you contribute to a rising tide for you and someone else that you can collaborate with? I'm going to leave you with that question. Think on that, journal on it if you need to, and let me know what you think. Shoot me a text, 860-609-6374. I'd love to hear from you. Thoughts on this episode or any other episode you hear on the podcast. I can't believe how many episodes we've released of Keep What You Earn. There are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in tax savings contained in our episode library. And there are so many topics that we cover. To make it easier to find more of what you need right now, we actually created a custom curated playlist just for you. That's right, a playlist of value-packed episodes that you're looking for based on your goals right now in your business. Whether you're making your first sale, trying to strategize your taxes, or you're scaling your team, there is something here for everyone. Check out the podcast playlist generator now using the link in the show notes and explore your custom playlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye.